In case you missed it, guys, Jimmy Graham posted this picture right here on his Instagram story yesterday. The caption reading, it's been real, New Orleans. Thank you for all the love with the city of New Orleans in the window of the plane that he was flying. So if this is the last time we see Jimmy Graham suit up, or if this was the last season, we will see him be rocking the Fleur de Lis on the helmet. Guys, it's been an awesome career for number 80. The Pilot was a first-team All-Pro in 2013, second-team All-Pro in 2011, five-time Pro Bowler, the NFL receiving touchdown leader in 2013, a career with 719 receptions, 8,545 yards, and 89 touchdowns, which is fourth amongst all tight ends in the history of the NFL, and also he had one goalpost bent. So, guys, let's show Jimmy Graham some love in case this is the last time we do see him in the NFL in a Saints uniform. Hit the thumbs up icon. Send the pilot away with a bunch of likes and a bunch of love. Get loud. Number 80, Jimmy Graham. Thank you for everything you've done for the city of New Orleans and us as Saints fans. So we're going to be going through the 2024 free agents list, and I'm going to be naming all of the people who are a free agent on the Saints roster and then a handful of players who I think that they should bring back. And a prior, high priority, lower priority, and then some luxury players as well. So let's just speed run through all of the free agents that the New Orleans Saints have going into 2024's offseason. Michael Thomas, Andrews Pete, Jameis Winston, Trey Turner. Yeah, did you forget about him? Jimmy Graham, Lonnie Johnson, Isaac Yadam, Zach Bond, Cameron Irving, Max Garcia. And then you have another handful of guys. Ty Summers, Ugo Amadi, Malcolm Roach, Kyle Phillips, Jonathan Abram, Keith Kirkwood, Andrew Dowell, Eno Benjamin. And that rounds out the unrestricted free agents. But then the Saints also have a handful of uh, exclusive rights free agents, uh, restricted free agents, and then a uh, street free agent, which is a new football term that I learned. So DJ Mustafer, he is an exclusive rights free agent. Rashid Shahid, also an exclusive rights free agent. Lynn Bowden and uh, Adam Prentice are restricted free agents, and Ryan Connolly is a uh, street free agent, meaning um, they don't have to wait until the beginning of the new league year to sign a contract. They won't factor in it into any compensatory formula. So there you go. That's the list of free agents. So shout him out, Saints fans. We just ran through the entire list of Saints free agents. Name a player that the Saints have to bring back. Let me know. I want you to get loud in the comment section. So now we're going to dive into each player that I think the Saints should return this offseason. And like I said, it's going to be a group of high-priority players, some lower-priority players, and then a handful of luxury players because I think that at the end of the day, you do have to kind of look at it in the scope of what's most important, who are some guys that you could afford to leave, and who are some guys that, you know what, if they're available, why not bring them back? So let's start off with the high-priority list. And Rashid Shahid, this is cheating right here. Um, obviously, he is an exclusive rights-free agent. He's going to be back. The only option for him and the New Orleans Saints is to return him on a veteran's min a vet minimum salary in 2024, and then he'll be eligible for an extension in 2025. Isaac Yadam, I think that he's another player that needs to be brought back. He's had a career best season. I think that if the Saints were to trade Marshawn Lattimore, Isaac Yadam would bring some familiarity and be a good player to have, um, as well as drafting another player. And that Again, that's if Marshawn Lattimore leaves. Either way, I think that Isaac Yadam should return. Malcolm Roach, he's been a project for the New Orleans Saints and a successful one at that. At the defensive interior position, we have a very young defensive interior, and I think that he is a key piece in that. He's continued to get better every single year and more and more reps, and that leads to more and more production, and that seems to be the case for Malcolm Roach. Zach Bond, shocker to have him on this list because hand like I remember talking week five, week six, saying just, dude, cut him and get him as far away from the team. Here's the thing, though. Whenever he puts his hand in the dirt and the Dennis Allen uses him as a pass rusher, the dude's good. Zach Bond, crazy thought. When you, you draft him and use him the way that he was used at Wisconsin, which was a pass rusher and a uh, guy who attacked the quarterback, 
I think that it was much more successful. And Ugo Amadi, I think that he's a player that you have to bring back. He was good in the slot. He's a very versatile player, and Dennis Allen likes those kind of guys. And I think that he could be a good kind of guy to assist uh, the cornerback room because Alante Taylor, he did struggle in the slot. He's better in the outside. So I think Ugo Amadi could be a good slot position guy. He also racked up an interception this season, which was pretty cool in a limited role as well. But in terms of Zach Bond, shout out to John Sigler for this information. Did you know Zach Bond had more sacks, pressures, and passes batted down in his last six games with the New Orleans Saints than his first 58? Kind of crazy what happens whenever you let a player do what he does best and rush the passer. Hopefully the Saints can be smart enough to bring him back and use him as a pass rusher because otherwise I don't know if there's a lot of other players to set the edge and to be a quick, you know, hand-in-the-dirt pass rusher like that. Cam Jordan, he's getting older. Isaiah Foskey, he could possibly do some of that, but, you know, there's also guys in the draft like a Jared Verse that you could go get as well. So I think Zach Bond has earned some money with New Orleans. Otherwise, I think that other teams are going to go sign him and bring him in as an edge rusher. So I think the Saints should use him at that position as well. So get active in this uh, comment section. Would you bring back Zach Bond type return or walk in the comment section? I mean, the stats we just showed on screen, the first 58 games, very underwhelming. The last six... Very, very good. So are we going with a little recency bias or should we just go with what we've seen more of? And that's been a lackluster play. But like we said, Zach Bond's been playing really well. So get active in the comment section and let me know what you think down below. All right. So next thing we're going to talk about is the players that I have a low priority list for. But I want you guys to go ahead and help us and support the channel by visiting chatsports.com slash Saints hats. You can get yourself some beanies, some sideline hats. I know it's getting kind of chilly all throughout the country. And I'm not going to lie. These beanies are absolutely fresh. I got this jacket for Christmas. And I can tell you right now, if I had this beanie or this next one, I mean, I know I'm going to be looking like the coolest mug uh, in all of the this side of Mississippi. I know I'm just going to be looking sick. I love this beanie. This hat is absolutely fresh. Fun fact, this is the hat that Jimmy Graham wears on the sidelines. So if you want to go look like Jimmy Graham and rep his gear, chatsports.com slash Saints hats. And we also have this beanie as well available for you, as well as a lot of other ones that were not pictured. Again, I encourage you, go use that link. It's in the comment section and description of this video because you're my best friends. All right, I do think that Lynn Bowden should be brought back. Lynn Bowden Jr. was a very, very good player in a very uh, interesting role for the New Orleans Saints. Fun fact, he did have the longest carry for the Saints uh, rushing attack. Had a longer carry than Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams, and Kendra Miller. That's pretty interesting when you, when you think about it. And Taysom Hill, actually, to think about that. Um, but... In terms of the receiving yards, he didn't do a ton receiving. 11 receptions, 83 yards, 5 carries, 32 yards on the ground. Most of them came in that 29-yard uh, rush by Bowden. But he is a guy who they use a lot in motion. He added versatility. He added some speed and some you know creativity elements that I think the Saints should value. And I personally value. So I want to see Bowden back. Give him a cheap contract. Don't pay him too much. And you know see if he wants to come back and run it back into black and gold with an offense he's familiar with and that he actually was pretty successful in. So my lower priority list here, Andrus Pete. I think that he is a lower priority guy. Obviously, he's a versatile guy. He played left guard. He played left tackle when Trevor Penning couldn't perform well. So I think that he's a guy that should be considered to be brought back, but I would much rather take any of those five players that we mentioned earlier over Andrus Pete. But you have to get younger and more success and, and more just – uh, talented at the offensive line position, in my opinion. So go draft an offensive lineman, but if Pete wants to come back on a vet men deal, why not? Keith Kirkwood, he is a player that there is some chemistry, it appears, between him and Derek Carr. Um, actually, Derek Carr's first touchdown in the preseason was to Keith Kirkwood against the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a good player. He has some talent. He just wasn't utilized a ton. I would honestly be okay with drafting a younger wide receiver than Kirkwood, but he does bring you something that is, you know, pretty valuable, and that's being a familiar pass catcher with a familiar tar face for uh, Derek Carr. Eno Benjamin, he's also he was on the uh, on the roster. He was on the practice squad a lot of this uh, a lot of this year. You know, very very limited sample size in terms of what he's done throughout his NFL career, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a place in case. 
you know, a player gets hurt in case Alan Kamara gets moved on from. You know, having Eno Benjamin around on the practice squad or in the bottom part of the depth chart, I don't think is a bad idea considering he's only 25 years old. Adam Prentice, another player that's low priority for me. I mean, that fumble that he had on the goal line is unforgivable, but the full, fullback position more so seems like it's kind of going away more or less, and I don't know if that's really the accurate way to say that, but uh, in terms of what he can offer, he's a good, he's an all right pass blocker, I would say, and he can do some things there to protect Derek Carr, but Jamal Williams did fine in pass protection. I think that if you were to go and bring in a different running back or a different fullback, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but Prentice, I don't think it would be a bad idea to bring him back, but I'm not necessarily prioritizing bringing him or having him return to the, sa the Saints this season. So in terms of Andrus Pete, though, he is the main guy I want to focus in on. His production at PFF, according to PFF, 60.2 overall grade, 54.5 uh, pass blocking grade, and then a run blocking grade of 62.1. Trevor Penning has not panned out to be the player we thought he was going to be. We knew he was going to be a project, but that project clearly needs more time. So Andrews Pete does give you the ability to have a little bit more time on Penning. This is a very, very dire and very, very important offseason for Penning. If he can't get it together and find a way to be a starting tackle in this league, then that is going to be a big, big issue. So bringing him Andrews Pete back might not be a bad idea because you could bring him back maybe for cheap, maybe because he's a little bit older um, at 31 years old. But I also think that you have to have him maybe as an insurance policy. So it's kind of a weird thing. We have to see what goes on with the draft. And if they it's Saints draft an offensive tackle, you know, maybe that gives you the ability to move on from Andrew Spieth. But I think that he is a player that could be brought back. Wouldn't be surprised if they bring him back, but we'll see. So my luxury list, Jameis Winston. I absolutely love this guy. He's one of the best teammates you could ask for in the NFL. He's a great culture guy, a great locker room guy, and quite honestly, he's very, very fun to watch. I know he's not the best player in the league, but he's so much fun to watch on the field. Jimmy Graham, of course, dude. At this point, if Jimmy Graham wants to just come back and catch one or two balls a year and have those be touchdowns, F it. Bring him back. I don't give a damn. I love Jimmy Graham. I'd love to see him bend another goalpost in Atlanta. Um, Michael Thomas. You guys are going to hate me for having him this low on the list. I know you guys were probably sitting here and be like, where's Mike? Why are we not talking about Mike yet? He's a luxury item for me, man. If he wants to come back on a really cheap deal, sure. But I think he's going to want a lot more money, and I think that he's, another team's going to pay him that. Guys, it might be the end of, the year, of an era. And it pains me to say this because Mike is a special player. We can't ever forget and we can't thank him enough for what he did in terms of trying to come back and give Drew Brees a, another Super Bowl ring and risking further injury that ultimately happened. He is a phenomenal football player. He got a lot of shit being slant boy. He got a lot of, you know, praise for an incredible season a handful of years ago, but dude, he just can't stay healthy. He has some off field drama and that's not for me to say whether or not he's right, whether or not he's wrong. There's just so many factors here and I just if if he does, wants to come back on a cheap deal, bring him back. If he doesn't want to do that, I could see the Saints parting ways. Because at the end of the day, you have Mike's replacement. In my personal opinion, A.T. Perry gives me very, very strong young Michael Thomas vibes. Go back and look at that catch that he had against the Falcons whenever Derek Carr was throwing it in his own end zone and he caught it on the sideline. He got up, flexed in front of the Dolphins, or at Dolphins, in front of the Falcons defender and got up like real pumped, real hyped. He is a dominant jump ball specialist. He can climb the ladder. He's aggressive at the point of catch. And his production speaks for itself. 20.5 yards per catch. There you go. That's all I have to say. So take a guess. Where will Mike Thomas play in 2024? Do you think it's going to be in New Orleans? Or do you think it's going to be another team? Personally, I think he's a Kansas City Chief. Let me know. Take a guess in the comment section. And as always, Saints fans, y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time.